4,000 years had pointed forward to that sacrificial system I'm talking about, had pointed forward to um, the cross. In other words, for 4,000 years, the symbolic lambs were sacrificed, pointing forward to Christ's death, which is the real lamb. Now, I always read it and said, well, approximately four years, 4,000 years. Now, all of our, 100% of all our pioneers believed in the great week of history. Have you heard of the great week of history? The great week of history says we have 7,000 years, period, allocated by God for the great controversy. 6,000 years on earth, followed by 1,000 years in heaven. Okay, the great week of history. And much of this, much of the, many of the Old Testament uh, ceremonial laws prefigured the great week of history. Uh, it, for example, um, the land would be s sown for six years and the seventh year would remain dormant. Right? That's a prefigurement of the great week of history. <clears throat> and, uh, and then you have others, that, like, the, like the Jubilee, also a system which pointed forward symbolically. The more we study and learn about it, the more we realize how perfectly it described the whole plan of salvation. Now, let's think about it a little bit. I don't have a blackboard, unfortunately, to show you here. But if the cross was the end of a 4,000-year period, which is what it, appear, it says, right? Jesus was standing at the dividing place. The next day, he was going to be killed. The, the dividing point of two great economies, which for 4,000 years had pointed forward to, that, to the cross. Now, if you, look, if you count from the cross backwards 4,000 years, what, is that, what year does that put you in? Huh? What? What year was it at the cross? When, when, what year was, did, Jesus, was Jesus, did Jesus die? 31. 31 AD. Now, if you back up 4,000 years, what do you get? You get the year 31. Okay? In other words, the, the, zero year, the, the, the year zero was supposed, supposedly from creation. But Jesus died on the year 31. So if you back up 4,000 years, you end up in the year 31. Right? So the sacrificial system began 4,000 years. He didn't say approximately. He said exactly 4,000 years, Elder Reed said. That, in other words, Jesus didn't, didn't die approximately on the right day, did he? He died exactly on the, the right day, the Passover, and, and he fulfilled the law completely. Now, if 4,000 years before is when the sacrificial system began, that meant the following. This is not necessarily earth-shaking, but it's interesting to me. That means the sin entered the world approximately 31 years after God created the world. Because the sacrificial system began at sin. Jesus himself killed the first lamb, right? Okay? So, Adam and Eve, 31 years in the Garden of Eden, they sin, the sacrificial system begins. 4,000 years later, exactly, Jesus dies. Fulfilling, in other words, the clock started ticking it's like you have your stopwatch, and as long as Adam and Eve don't sin, nothing happens. The moment they sin, God says, 6,000 years and 1,000 years in heaven. Seven, Satan had, at that point, exactly 6,000 years with a 1,000-year period left over while we we're in heaven. Now, what does that mean? How many, thousand, how, many, uh, how many thousand years are left on this earth after the cross? And that goes to when? Well, 31 plus 2,000. 2,031. Now, here's where Elder Reed doesn't, he doesn't go into it too clearly because he doesn't possibly want to get labeled with setting dates. And, of course, you can set a date because uh, that's only the outside limit. The Bible says Jesus will cut everything short in justice. So it's certainly not going to be 31 when Jesus comes. It'll be shorter than that. It'll be before that. But 31, 2031, I mean, is the outside limit of the period allocated, the maximum period allocated for this, world's, for this great controversy on earth is 2031 or approximately, I mean, within a year or so, if, if you want to go back and calculate the very month, it, it's irrelevant. What's important is the basic time period. 
we're living in the last generation. And Jesus will not come back after AD 31 or 2031. He'll come before. How much? We don't know the day or the hour. Can we, can we know it's before? Yes, because the Bible says he will cut the time short in history. Now, what does it do to you to know this is the last generation? Absolutely, positively, this is the last generation. Well, it does make your plans for your retirement a little different, doesn't it? Huh? All of a sudden, at least, at least those of us that are younger, we know we will never retire. I'm, I'm, I'm coming up on 50, one more year to go. But I expect to be around. I, you're seven, Richard, you're 70. I retired early, but I have something. What it really does for me is that I realize I need to be doing something that I enjoy doing. And that's why I don't want to be doing the same thing. And technically, you should be alive in AD 2031. You could be. I could be. You could be. You're in good health right now. And uh, there's no reason why in 20-something years you couldn't be alive. The rest of us, I don't think anybody can outdate you here. I think you're probably the... Okay. How old are... Do you mind telling us approximately? 75. 75, okay. I just met a man... Two, by the way, I just met a man 200, 102 years old in Colombia, and he shook my hand. He could hardly see very well, but he said, Brother Gates, I want to tell you the Lord revealed to me that I'm going to be alive when he comes. And I loved it. How could I argue with him? I believe the same thing, too. Now, I don't know if he's going to be alive or not, but that's certainly feasible. And by the way, I just finished talking last year to a lady, the oldest living person alive. She's dead now, but um, 126 years old. Down in Dominica, on the island. The CNN had just done an interview with her. A little French lady. She was a slave in the islands. And I told her, you must be lonely because your friends must have passed away. She goes, no, not all of them. Right across the street is my friend Jane, and she's 116. <laughs> I thought, wow, why do they eat here? You know? well, the fish must have some kind of special oils, cod liver oil, I don't know. Uh, but in any case, we are looking at the last generation. Now, I've been saying this is the last generation for some years, not because I can sit down and prove it. It's because Jesus said in Matthew 16, you can read the meteorology but you don't know how to read the signs of the times. Ye hypocrites. Aren't we a little bit hypocritical to be Seventh-day Adventists, the, 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 the special forerunners, the Elijah message to prepare the way for the second coming of Jesus, and most Seventh-day Adventists don't believe he's coming soon. How do I know that? By how they spend their time and money. You can tell me all the words you want, but I can tell you if you believe it or not by how you spend your time and money. If you really believe Jesus was coming back soon, you would spend your time differently. Most Emmet Davenists do not believe that Jesus is coming back soon. And so therefore, we are not in a condition or prepared to finish the work that we have to do. So we have no Elijah message. In fact, I don't know if you've noticed or not, but there's quite a bit of fear about stepping on a dragon's tail. So in many of our television networks and others and pulpits around the world, not everybody has caved into that, but there's a lot of pressure from Rome and the U.S. government through with Rome to be careful what you say. Don't preach certain things because we do not look kindly on somebody speaking bad about somebody else. And so you just try to preach prophecy and it's considered to be hate. Huh? In fact, in Australia and Canada today, you, can, you can't preach freely because you go to jail. Therefore, times are coming in the United States, everywhere there's pressure in other countries to be careful what you preach because if you preach the wrong thing, you can be accused of hate sermons, and so on. So, we have a message. We're the Seventh-day Adventist Church, and we really don't believe Jesus is coming back. So not in, in our lifetime. Anyhow, my grandfather believed the same thing. Why should I hurry? Now, there's a time coming, and we're gonna, I'm going to be getting more and more. I'm going to examine some of the things. But first of all, I want to tell you that I've been preaching. Jesus, this is the last generation for several other reasons. And now Elder Reed comes and says this, and it fits perfectly. You know, God doesn't preach to only one person. God, God preaches the same thing and inspires different points of view, different things, the same message coming from different angles. It all matches. It's very important. And if you want to find out if Jesus is coming soon, you need to attend some Pentecostal churches and some Baptist churches and some other churches because they believe Jesus is coming back soon.